I'm a human rights lawyer in the Netherlands, and uh, our project has been active on the issue of Roma, Sinti, and travelers, and on the extinction policy, which I will be talking about. And when this meeting was organized, I asked the organization, will someone from the community speak? Because that's one of the big problems with, uh, well, the community, that uh, people are always talking about the community, but not with them. And so I'm very happy to be speaking after this great community organizer, Sabina, and I also have the feeling I can do this talk. Uh, uh. So, uh, Roma Sinti Travelers, uh, I just asked Peter, who's in the room, who knows a lot about more about it than, than I do, but I think it's about some 50,000 in, in the Netherlands. Uh, like Sabina already said, uh, Roma Sinti were exterminated, uh, uh, huge amounts of them in the Second World War. That's, of course, a well-known fact, but I do think that the position of Roma Sinti and travelers in the Netherlands right now, their rights, and especially their human rights, uh, are not really a well-known human rights issue in the Netherlands. Um, if you study human rights or you're a human rights activist uh, and you read a bit of the uh, verdicts by the European Court uh, in Strasbourg, uh, well, you bump into the best verdicts, well, in my opinion, are about the Roma. Uh, one of the best verdicts, I think, of, of the European Court is the case DH and others uh, versus the Czech Republic, which was on discrimination and racism against uh, Roma. And, and, well, you should all read it if you, if, if you like reading nice stories and good verdicts, because it starts with, with the history of, of the Roma people. Um, well, because I have 10 minutes, I, I, I will not go into that too long, but th they start with where they came from, and although, although they have been in Europe since the 14th century, often they are not recognized by the majority society as a fully-fledged European people, and they have suffered throughout their history from rejection and persecution this culminated in their attempted extermination by the Nazis, who considered them an inferior race. And as a result of centuries of rejection, many Roma communities today live in very difficult conditions, often on the fringe of society in the countries where they have settled, and their, their participation in public life is extremely limited. Well, I think this is true for the whole of Europe. So also for the, for the Netherlands, uh, we, we saw some of the pictures and also if you look at the media, how people are talking about Roma Sinti travelers, um, I think, well, stereotyping uh, is at least one of the things that pops into your mind. Just to give a, uh, as a lawyer, I, I've helped a, a lot of Roma families and I've experienced a lot of, well, blatant racism in that. But um, when we started the project on strategic litigation on human rights in the Netherlands, we thought we, well, we wanted to explore what can we do for the Roma Sinti travelers in the Netherlands. And we thought this, this has to be an issue in the Netherlands. We, we want to do something with it. So I had a talk with a lot of parliamentarians of different parliamentary parties. Uh, and one of the center parties, I talked with two parliamentarians, and they asked me, what are you going to do in the Netherlands? And I said, well, of course, something with Roma Sinti travelers. And they said, well, that's not really a human rights issue because uh, they are breeding grounds for criminality, of course. Um, so uh, er, if, the, if something goes wrong, if you see all this police, if you see the extinction policy, well, it's their own fault because they're all criminals anyway. And this is something that they said to me because, well, I'm just a Dutch white guy and I'm, I'm not from that background, so I think they can blatantly say this. But also if you look at the official policy papers in different cities uh, uh, that, that have specific policies directed against especially Roma, but also Sinti and travelers. I mean, it's, it's well, li like I said, stereotyping at the least. So what we did is we organized a hearing in The Hague and we invited uh, a lot of experts, but especially people from the communities um, to, to just hear them. W where does it hurt in the Dutch context? What, what, what do you think should be done? And one of the things we heard from different communities and different municipalities was the so-called extinction policy. Well, given the fact of the Second World War and so many Roma and Sinti being exterminated by the Nazis, I couldn't believe that there were municipalities making policy directed at Roma and Sinti travelers and calling it the extinction policy, but it appeared to be true. What the extinction policy is about is that the government um, w very quickly, there were huge camps in, in the 70s, and they were decentralized 
in, in the 80s, uh, well, uh, end of the 70s, in the 80s. So if you live in the Netherlands, in almost all of the municipalities, you have these small Roma Sinti, but mostly traveler camps. And the, at, a, at a certain point, the policy, that the it was a local, national policy, it also became decentralized. So municipalities could deal with these camps, well, in, they had five different options. To, to support them or to, well, they have all different options and one of these options in, in law is the zero option. So do nothing. And some of the municipalities, like I already said, have decided that, well, they interpret the zero option as the extinction policy. So what they do is they use all kinds of uh, policy means that they have uh, uh, to get rid of the camps or to well make them smaller or make it as difficult uh, as well, as they can think of for the people living there to continue their way of life. And one of the ideas behind that, of course, you have well the idea I was already telling you about is a, a very stereotypical idea that these are breeding nests of criminality. And I, and I really think that a lot of people uh, that are active in this, this extinction policy uh, really do think, well, most of them are criminals anyway, so we, we should destroy this culture or m well, make them part of the normal culture. Uh, why don't they live normal lives? Why don't they just start living in normal houses, as normal people do, as, 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 the, as the other civilized people in the Netherlands do? I think that's a very important idea about uh, uh, why they well, are demolishing the camps. Because I also visited the camps also with Sabina and with others, and it was quite shocking. I mean, we went to one camp where there used to be a lot of trailers, but now we saw all these concrete blocks for that were there for at least 10 years, all overgrown. There was only one caravan left. And it was clearly, I mean, they weren't building, uh, if, if they have an excuse like we're going to build a kindergarten there or a, a zoo or whatever, well. But, but they, they, they just left it to, well, they just left it empty, and also it's not the best feeling for for the the Roma Sinti travelers still living in that caravan. Um, so, th so they have all this p policy m means with rental policy, with uh, well, a lot of different laws they use to to combat the um, uh, the Roma Sinti traveler culture. And what we what we did we did a search on the internet because again, human rights uh, law, Strasbourg, very good on. Roma Sinti travelers, and we couldn't find any real verdicts in Dutch jurisprudence uh, about this. So we did see a fight of over 30 years of Roma Sinti travelers fighting in law uh, uh, the, the extinction policy, but we didn't find the real good human right discussion. So just to give you a picture of what the human, uh, what the court in Strasbourg says, the question is, do these people have the right to live uh, the way they want to. And, um, yeah. So, they s the, the, the Euro European Court of Human Rights ha has dealt with this matter, well, often. And in Winterstein, it, it's the latest case of 2013, it's reaffirmed that, and I quote, the occupation of a caravan is an integral, an integral part of the identity of travelers, even where they are no longer, uh, even where they no longer live a wholly nomadic existence, and that measures affecting the stationing of caravans affect their ability to maintain their I identity and to lead a private and family life in accordance with that tradition. And so basically, the court finds that the way of life of travelers touches the very essence of Article 8 of the Europe uh, European Convention on Human Rights. And for the furthermore, they say that the vulnerable position of Roma and travelers as a minority means that some special consideration should be given to their needs and their different lifestyle, both in the re relevant regulatory planning framework and in reaching decisions in particular cases. So, concluding, um, the, the government and the municipalities should take into account the Roma Sinti travelers. At least talk with them about what they want, what they think would be the best way to, to lead their lives. Well, to, to sum up in two sentences. What we tried to do is we started a case on a man whose caravan would be demolished. 
It, uh, the caravan was from his mother. She died. He lived there. He, he is a traveler himself. He couldn't go anywhere because there was an extinction policy in the whole region. He couldn't take his caravan, so that would be demolished. The ground below it was municipal uh, uh, property. Uh, we started the case uh, together with the community. We won the case, but on very formal grounds, and now it's into appeal, and we hope to win this, well, one human rights uh, verdict that can help the community. Thank you. <laughs>